Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. A few months ago I found this old Soviet jointer for sale. It has 640mm long blades and a 2570mm by 650mm size table. At first I wasn't sure if I need this dinosaur at my new workshop, but when I made my mind, my dad with a friend and I got ready for the adventure. This machine weighs between 600 and 800 kilograms, so it was not easy to take it from the shed where it spent its last few years abandoned. The tractor loaded it on a car trailer and we brought it to my property. Unloading this beast, however, was even harder as we did not have a tractor. So we took a couple of 2x6s, a few steel pipes and after about an hour of hard brain and muscle work, we managed to put it on my driveway. The tables of this jointer had a bit of surface rust. This cast iron fence is really sturdy, should work just fine after tweaking it. The shaft has only two blades. It will probably won't give the smoothest finish, but on the other hand it should be easier to align the blades properly. This cam lever allows changing the height of the infeed table. Not sure how level and parallel both tables are, but they're adjustable. Both infeed and outfeed tables have four big bolts at every corner, so you can adjust all of them. Which is good, but also a bit tricky. This old electrical panel was overkill. I did not like how much it protrudes, also how it looks and how heavy it is. I will replace it with an electromagnetic starter. I was not aware what kind of motor this jointer had, and the previous owner thought it was 4 or 5 kilowatts. All I knew is that it's a three-phase motor. Later I took it out and on the metal plate I saw it's 7.5 kilowatts, so quite a beast. The same day I started grinding old paint with this wire brush. Even though the brush looks aggressive, the layer of the paint was extremely thick, up to 3 mm in some spots, so it took a while. Later I switched from this battery-powered Makita angle grinder to a more powerful corded one. I spent a lot of hours grinding the paint. It was way harder than I anticipated. I removed many parts to be able to access some trickier spots more easily. I took out the knives and polished the shaft as well. After all the sides of the jointer were paint free, I tried to polish the tables. Although it was just a surface rust, it took me probably a couple of hours to clean it even with a very aggressive wire brush. After polishing was done, I coated both tables with a paste wax. Which turned out to be a mistake when it's 30 degrees outside. The wax got sticky and I had to clean everything and coated the tables with WD-40 to prevent them from rusting while jointer was outside. Finally, I could start painting all the parts and the machine itself. This was the easiest part of this restoration process and the result was really promising. We had some heavy rain throughout the night, so the machine was covered in rust again, but this time it was really easy to clean them. First I ground the rim of both tables and gave it one coat of paint. Then I cleaned the rust from everything else and painted with this beautiful dark green paint. I usually take care of all the tricky spots first and leave the easiest part for the later. Even after one coat of paint the machine looked quite nice but I gave it a second coat next day as per the instructions from Hammerite. I also fabricated this wooden handle. Not sure how it will hold up, but looks a bit nicer. The next day I took out the motor. I wanted to check the quality of the wiring, spoiler alert, it was bad, and also wanted to see how powerful this motor is. It was challenging lifting it by myself, as it probably weighs between 60 and 80 kilos. Here you can see how crappy those old wires look and that they were simply relying on a weak joint and this electrical tape. I soldered new cable to these wires and also put heat shrinks on all of the joints. After the wiring was sorted out, I brought the jointer inside. The old rusty blades were sharpened and I put them onto the shaft. However, later I decided to buy a pair of new blades because these were a bit curved and it was impossible to align their height properly. Here is the shot of how curved the blades were. 
The jointer needed its motor back in, so I quickly fabricated this card and brought it to the machine. After fitting the motor, I put the belts on. And the last thing I needed to sort out was the fitting of the switch to the machine and wiring it. I drilled a hole under the infeed table. It took a while, and in this shot you can clearly see why. I also drilled two holes in this bracket which was used to mount the old big electrical panel and sanded it and painted with hammerite. Here you can see the switch mounted in place. It's not going anywhere. Later I asked a friend to help me with the wiring. He gave me the instructions and I wired everything accordingly and was ready for the first start. As you can see, it was not successful. The next day my friend came again and explained what was missing. After the quick fix, the jointer started with no problem. I also bought the small dust extractor which happened to be a matching color. To connect this extractor to the jointer I needed to fabricate a dust hood. First I fitted this plastic cardboard to direct all the chips towards the rear of the jointer. Next I made this hood from a piece of this galvanized sheet metal and riveted a 100mm diameter port for the hose. After that I put this rubber gasket around the hole to prevent air from leaking and improve suction. And lastly I fitted this hood with 4 bolts and the job was done. As you can see, the hose fits nicely onto the port. As this jointer is very old and dust extraction was not the first priority when making this machine 60 years ago, my dust extractor collects maybe 80% of the chips. Some chips still come out from the shaft onto the infeed table, but it's multiple times better than not having any chip extractor at all. Here are some before and after shots for comparison. Overall, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. I will enjoy using this machine much more now than I would have without refurbishing it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Cheers!